This is by far the easiest, cleanest, most simple way to do 100% Enraged Zamorak. It requires no food. I use Revolution for almost every input. And the best part is, with the method that we're going to be using, Phase 7 goes from being the hardest phase in the entire boss fight to the easiest one. It is 100% consistent, it is foolproof, and it doesn't really require anything in terms of good gear, in terms of good setups, in terms of good PVM knowledge. Everything you need, I will explain right now. Let's get it. First off, let's quickly go over the gear and invent setup. I'm using a Hellhound and the Aegis Aura. Both of these give damage reduction. If you don't have the Aegis Aura, consider using Majorat, Supreme Invigorate, Vampirism, or even Penance. It shouldn't matter all that much, but if you do have Aegis, it's the best option for this method. Next up, you'll notice I am not wearing a Zuck Cape. When we do 500% Enrage, you're going to want a Zuck Cape, but for 100, you actually don't need it at all. I'm wearing the standard Tier 90 Necromancy tank gear, as well as the Tier 90 weapons. In my Rune Pouch, I've got Runes for the Prism of Restoration, which is my preferred method of healing up my Hellhound. You'll notice its HP bar on the top left-hand side of the screen, and as it gets lower, you'll see me drop a Prism, and the Prism will heal it all the way up to full. If you don't want to use a Prism of Restoration, you could alternatively bring Hellhound Scrolls. I think they're a little bit more annoying, though. Next up, in my Pocket Slot, I'm using a Jaspook. This is not because the Jaspook is exceptionally good here. It's just a good, cheap budget option that will not break the bank. The last two unoccupied slots are the Amulet of Souls and the Ring of Death. If you have an Essence of Finality, obviously that is better than the Amulet of Souls, but we're balling on a budget today and the Amulet of Souls is more than good enough. As for the Ring of Death, this is one of the few bosses where we're actually going to be using the effect of the Ring of Death and we're actually going to be relying on it to activate for Phase 7. We'll get to that when we get there, but the Ring of Death is extremely useful at Zamorak, and it's really good to have. In my invent, I've got an Overload, I've got any kind of Adrenaline Potion, I've got some Prayer Restoring Potions, I've got an Enhanced Excalibur, I've got some Vulnerability Bombs, I've got a Power Burst of Vitality, I've got my Necromancy Runes, and then in addition to that, all I've got is some Sardom and Bruise and some Blue Blubber Jellyfish, but as I mentioned earlier, we will not actually be using any of them. Lastly, I'm going to go over two interfaces that are showing on my screen. The first is on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, and that is a Necromancy Job Gauge. It's part of the Alt-1 Toolkit, and I've linked it in the description down below if you want it for yourself, but basically all it does is it displays all of my Necromancy stacks in a way that is easier for you guys to follow. You'll see I've got my Conjures and the duration on them, I've got my Soul Count, and then underneath my Soul Count, I've got a bar that is the length of time that bloat lasts for. Underneath the bloat bar, I've got 12 little divots, and those 12 divots are my necrosis stacks. So anytime I've got more than six, I want to be using Finger of Death. On the bottom right-hand side of the screen next to my invent, I've got something called Better Buff Bars. It's the same as the traditional buff bar, except instead of buffs randomly moving around all the time, all it does is lock them in place and fix them, and we're trying it out because I think it might make it a little bit easier for people to follow what we're doing. With the gear and setup out of the way, let's talk about Zamorak. This is the Zamorak Arena, and there are six pads on the ground. The first part of the boss fight is charging up these six pads, and you get to choose which order you want to charge them up in. But every single pad you charge up will apply a buff to you as well as Zamorak. The tricky thing about Zamorak is that these buffs get stronger and stronger every single phase that you progress through. So whatever pad you charge up first, when you charge up the second pad, that buff will then gain an additional stack and it will be twice as potent as it was before. So basically, whatever you charge up first is going to be extremely potent by the end of the boss fight, and whatever you charge up last, you won't have to deal with quite as much. The tricky thing about Zamorak, though, is as soon as you get to Phase 7, your pad order completely swaps, so whatever you had the strongest at the end of Phase 6 will then be the weakest at the start of Phase 7, and vice versa. So you kind of have to pick your poison and choose if you want an easy Phases 1 through 6, or an easy Phase 7. Or, if you're following this method, we're going to do both. And here's how. I've labeled all of the pads on screen 1 through 6, and the order we're going to be doing in this video is as follows. We're going to start at pad 2, and then after pad 2, we're going to go to pad 4. After pad 4, we're going to go all the way back towards the B and pad 1. After that, we're going to go 3, 5, and then we're going to finish off with 6. The most important pads in this order are starting off with pad 2 and finishing off with pad 6. Finishing with pad 6 is important for the last phase of the boss fight, and starting with pad 2 is going to make sure that we have a nice, easy time the rest of the way. Now that we've got our pad order sorted out, it's time to get into the boss fight. You're also going to notice a revolution bar on the screen, and this is the Revo bar that I used for this entire kill. It starts with Touch of Death, and then goes Soul Sap, Conjure Undead Army, Command Ghost, Command Skeleton, Storm Shards, and then the Necromancy Basic Attack. In terms of our dealing damage rotation, it's going to be extremely simple. This Revo Bar is going to automatically upkeep all of our stacks for us, it's going to keep our Skeleton and our Ghost nice and healthy and happy, so all we really have to do is use our stacks when we have them. So whenever I have three souls, I'm going to manually click on Volley of Souls. Whenever I have six or above Necrosis stacks, I'm going to use Finger of Death, and whenever else I feel like it, I'm going to use my Death Guard Special Attack. Outside of that, Revo is completely and utterly taking the wheel. We don't even need to use ultimate abilities here. So, with that said, let's get it. 
Once you kill the six Chaos Witches, the fight is going to start and Zamrock is going to turn towards you and start attacking. Make sure that you're overloaded, your God Book is on, and you're also using the Darkness Incantation. You're also welcome to use Invoke Death, and that will save you a little bit of time once you get to the last pad. All right, and now let's begin. Just to make things a little easier to follow, I'm actually going to be manually clicking all of my manual inputs for abilities, and for the most part, Revolution is taking the wheel. The first thing you're going to notice that I'm doing is I wanted to whittle away at the gray HP just a little bit. Whenever you're dealing with gray HP at Zamorak in this rage bracket, you want to get it extremely low. I'd say below 40,000 damage before you charge up a pad. This is because during gray HP, you won't get any special attacks or anything. So it's basically free real estate to deal damage. As soon as you charge up the pad, the gray HP is going to turn red. And then that's when the fight actually begins and the boss will start using special attacks. So I've charged up the first pad. And now I'm quite simply letting Revolution take the wheel and I'm following my Revo bar the entire way through. I'm using my stacks as I have them. You'll notice I use Volley of Souls there because I've got three and that is all we're doing right now. And then Zamrock is gonna say this world will burn. Whenever Zami says this world will burn, you're gonna wanna turn off Soul Split and put on Deflect Melee, as simple as that. No abilities needed, just throw on your Melee Prey and you'll be good to go. There's gonna be smoke on the floor that you need to collect and you're gonna collect that smoke and there's gonna be a bar above your head. When the bar above your head explodes, you don't have to do anything. It will not hit you very much. And just like that, the first phase is completely done. We didn't have to do a whole lot there, and we're now good to go, and we're back into gray HP. So once again, with gray HP, you want to whittle away at it and get it nice and low before we proceed and continue on the fight. You'll notice here that I'm also not even prayer flicking. We're just leaving souls put on just to make life a little bit easier. If you want a prayer flick, it is technically better, but it is also a lot more actions per minute. And we're not really about that for this video. And as you can see, we're going to do the exact same thing we did at the beginning of the last pad, which is that we're going to whittle away at the gray HP. And then I'm going to click on my special action button on screen. Clicking on that special action button is going to put me into Infernus, where there is a witch that I have to kill. The witch doesn't do a whole lot of damage or anything like that, but you do have to kill the witch in order to charge up the next pad. So there's one witch to kill between every single phase. So as you can see, we're going to get on the witch and we're going to start to kill that witch. Now that our Chaos Witch is dead, we're going to hit the special action button again, and we're now ready to charge up the pad. Gray HP is nice and low, so it's time to get on that pad and start charging it up. And phase two is exactly the same as phase one. We're simply going to use our stacks as we have them, spend them whenever we're able to. Whenever I'm on three souls, I'm using Volley of Souls. Whenever I've got Necrosis stacks, I'm going to use them, and we're good to go. When Zamrock says, step into the dark, meet your death, it's going to say a demon stirs from within Infernus. And when this happens, you're going to get yeeted into the Infernus with an icon above your head, and a demon will spawn. All you have to do here is quite simply kill the demon. Uh, sometimes it will be running forward, other times it will be locked onto you, depending on the phase HP. Doesn't matter either way, just kill the demon. While we're killing this demon, Zamorak is charging up a bomb outside. And that does sound extremely scary, but because the Enrage is only 100%, and because of the setup we're using, this bomb does not have the ability to kill us no matter what, so long as our HP is nice and high. So because of that, we've got a couple really good options here. But what I'm going to be doing is as soon as Zamorak says, feel the rage of a god, it's also voice acted, uh, you can either use resonance if there's nothing else attacking you, or you can quite simply chug a power burst of vitality. And as you can see here, 12,000 damage. And that might seem like a lot to you, but you have to remember, I have 32,000 life points right now with my vit pot. Even if I hadn't vit potted, this wouldn't have killed me. And now that is the end of phase two. We're going to kill the witch again, and then we're going to hop back out and get set for phase three. Whenever there's an icon above your head, in order to get out of Infernus, you need to go to the same icon in the boss arena that matches whatever icon is above your head. If you go to the wrong one, not only are you going to get hit about 10,000 damage, but you're also going to feel like a bit of an idiot. So just make sure to pay attention and make sure that you're going to the icon that corresponds with whatever is above your head. It's worth noting that there are two sticks. You can go to either one. And just like that, we are back outside and on Zamorak, and we're heading over to the third pad that we're charging up, which is pad one. Remember, before we get on the pad, we want to whittle away at this gray HP and get it a little bit lower. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. This is a really relaxed part of the boss fight because Zamorak can't do any special attacks here. And now that we've got the gray HP to around 30,000 life points, a little bit lower than that, we're now going to get on the pad and charge it up and begin the phase. The next special attack we're going to talk about is Zamorak saying Chaos Unfettered, and Zamorak has disabled your prayers. When this happens, it's extremely simple. Your prayer is going to get knocked down, and then all you want to do is throw on Protect or Deflect Magic. That will make it do almost no damage, and even if you miss this, it is not going to kill you. And after that, we can go back to Soul Splitting, and we're going to finish off the phase. And just like that, we're halfway through the boss fight, and there have been no issues at all so far. We're sitting on full HP, we're nice and relaxed, we're nice and easy, and we're getting through this no problem at all. 
The next pad that we're going to be charging up after pad one is pad three. So I'm going to slowly meander over to pad three, and we're going to continue attacking Zamorok and lowering that gray HP just a little bit before we go in to take out the witch. There we go. I'm going to hit my special action button, and it's time to attack the witch once again. Now that the witch is dead, we're going to hop onto pad three. But pad three is a little bit special because the debuff that you get is Zamorok will actually be summoning two minions to help in battle. There's one called a life weaver and one called a protector. You can completely ignore the life weaver that spawns from the west hand side of the room, and you could ignore it for the entire rest of the boss fight. But the protector will make Zamorok take 25% reduced damage for the remainder of the boss fight so long as it's alive. So we absolutely don't want that. So at the start of pad three, what we're going to do is we're going to head ever so slightly east. And before we start attacking Zamorok, Rock, we are going to get on the protector and we are going to kill off the protector before we do anything else. Use your Revo Bar, use your stacks as before, and as soon as the protector is dead, just get back on Zamorok and this phase is exactly the same as all previous. And the next special attack is Zami saying, I will tear you asunder. When Zamorok says this, he's going to stop attacking you and he's going to charge up a bomb. And the way to get through this mechanic is to use a stun. The two options that you have are your Death Guard special attack or Soul Strike. Using one of those stuns will stagger Zamorok, you'll have to do a small amount of damage, and then the bomb will launch. The longer you wait to stun Zami, the larger the bomb will be. You'll see in this instance, I immediately use my Death Guard special attack, and because of that, the bomb that I end up dealing with is absolutely tiny. But if you do get a larger bomb, my best advice would be to use either Reflect or Resonance on it. It should not kill you with this setup. And just like that, we are going to continue on with the fight. And we're already four pads out of the way out of the six, so we're making really, really good progress here. We haven't had to use any food, and we're pretty simply just walking around, walking from pad to pad, and letting Revolution take the wheel. I mentioned this earlier, but when you charge up pad three, there are two minions that spawn. There's a Life Weaver as well as a Protector. The Life Weaver heals Zamorok such a tiny amount that you can actually just leave him alive the entire kill. It's not even worth killing him, but if you're someone that would like to kill him, you're more than welcome to. And just like that, we're going back into the Witch, and we got two pads left to go. Now that we've taken out the Chaos Witch, we're going to get rid of some of that Grey HP, and now we are going to get onto pad 5, get it charged up, and we're going to progress the same way through that we have up to this point. Now, pad 5, similar to pad 3, is a little bit different than the other one, because the debuff actually applies to the boss arena. And you're going to notice as soon as I charge up pad 5, that there are going to be Chaos Traps all around the arena. I've marked some of them with arrows just so you can see them a little bit better. The way these Chaos Traps work is they will hit you about 3,000 magic damage and also stun you if you step on them, and they're permanently affixed. It's also really important to note that there is a Chaos Trap that will spawn on top of the pad. You'll notice when I charge up this pad, I actually step off of it immediately, and that's to avoid the Chaos Trap. But if you don't quite have the timing down for that, you're welcome to use the Anticipate or Freedom abilities, or just throw on Protect from Magic, and you shouldn't have to worry too much. It will not kill you, it will not hit you that much, so long as you're praying accordingly. But yeah, that's one thing to look out for, is there are going to be Chaos Traps for the remainder of this phase and the next one as well. So every time you charge up a pad, you're going to get another spawn of Chaos Traps. The next special we're going to talk about is Zamorok saying you're already dead. And this is an extremely easy one in this Enrage Bracket. There is going to be a Red Ring of Death and this black tarry smoke that's kind of floating around the arena. If you stand in the red area, you're going to be hit about 500 damage every couple game ticks. So it's a small amount of damage, but it does add up. And my advice would be to not stand in the red area. The black smoke will hit you a small amount of damage, and it will also stun you in place for three seconds. So if the black smoke is on you, you want to use either the Anticipate or Freedom abilities just to make sure that you don't get locked in place. It's worth noting here that during this red ring, Zamorok can continue to run through other special attacks, and the next special attack that you'll get during this ring if you are not to phase it in time is going to be a melee slam. So just be mentally prepared that you may need to swap to deflect melee and pick up some smoke on the ground. And now that we've phased, it's time to head over to the sixth and final pad. I'm going to do something a little bit different before this pad because there is a Chaos Trap sitting right on top of that pad, and I don't want to jump out of Infernus and land directly on a Chaos Trap. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to wait for Zamorok to start using magic attacks on me, and then I'm actually going to use the Devotion ability and the Anticipate ability so that I can stand on top of that bomb, diffuse it without actually taking any damage. And then after that, I'm going to get rid of some of the Grey HP, I'm going to head into Infernus, get rid of the Witch, and then we're about to be ready for Phase 7. Just like before, we whittle away at the Grey HP, we get on the pad, we step off before we get hit by a Chaos Trap, and we are good to go. We've got a little bit of damage left, and then we're going to be heading on in to Phase 7. We've got another Melee Slam, so all I'm going to do is Prey Deflect Melee, and then we're going to end up phasing the boss before this bar above our head expires, which will nullify all the damage. It's worth noting that if we didn't phase it, our defensives are a little bit weakened at this phase of the boss fight, so unlike on Phase 1 where we could just phase tank this, my advice would be to use some combination of Resonance, 
Reflect, Disruption Shield, or a Power Burst of Vitality. Any combination of those four things, and you shouldn't die to this. And there we go. We are now heading in to the easiest phase of the boss fight, Phase 7. And I'm not even kidding about that. Check it out. The first thing we're going to do at the start of Phase 7 is we are quite simply going to click on the Chaos Demon and kill the Chaos Demon. We can ignore everything else. Get rid of the Demon. Get him out of the way. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to pan our camera upwards towards Zamorak because Zami is about to show two different icons, two different runes. And when he does that, we don't want to miss them. We want to take note of them. So the first one we see there is a hook. And the second one we see there is a B. So I'm actually going to type those out in the in-game chat just so that I don't forget them. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure our life points are high. And we're going to start attacking whatever the second rune Zamorak showed was. Now, we don't want to kill this rune completely, because if you kill the runes in the wrong order, you're going to take about 10,000 damage, which is not terribly pleasant. But what we do want to do is get it nice and low so that we can kill it in one or two abilities. This is just a super quick note that if you're wearing the tier 70, 80, or 90 death dealer robes, you're going to want to remove them for this singular part of the video. It has a chance of death marking your target, which will instantly kill it if it's low. And what we're currently trying to do is lower one of the runes without killing it. If your death mark were to activate on that automatically, what would end up happening is the rune would instantly die, and then so would you. So just make sure that if you are wearing the power gear, you want to take it off before you lower the rune. If it's easier for you to get rid of your rebo bar for this, you're more than welcome to just do this with basic attacks uh, and no conjures. But for me, my conjures got stuck anyway. So I'm just going to lower this B. And then as soon as the B has about 3,000 life points, I am going to stop attacking the bee. And the best way to stop attacking the bee, especially if you've got conjures on, is instead of clicking off, just click on Zamrock or click on a different target. And that way, they'll refocus, they'll start attacking Zami, and the bee is the right amount of life points. Now that the second rune that was shown is nice and low, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go completely kill that first rune, which in this case was the hook. And now that the hook is down, you're going to see Zamrock's connection is weakened. So the deal is this. As soon as we kill that bee, Zamrock is going to launch a melee slam, and then a massive bomb, and then all of the crazy phase seven things are going to happen. But we're actually gonna skip all of those things by using two really funny tricks. The first trick we're gonna use here is that sixth pad. Because we charge it up last, it's gonna be most potent for phase seven. And that sixth pad does this. I'll show it on screen, but we get an increase in damage dealt so long as our life points are below 60%. So we're going to make sure that our life points are below 60%. If you need a hand doing that and lowering your HP, you can also use the life transfer incantation. I've thrown it on screen and that will drop your life points by a sizable margin. The second trick is kind of a two-parter. It's a mix of death mark and shatter. There's a reason why Storm Shards was sneaking on that Revo bar for the entire boss fight, which is that we now have six Storm Shards on the Zamrock boss, and we're actually going to grab a couple extra ones just to be safe. We've got six. We're going to let it go here as soon as we have eight. It's worth noting that there is no time pressure here at all. We can take as long as we would like. And as soon as we've got our eight shards, we're going to keep going with the remainder of our rotation. And I'm going to show you guys how to skip every single difficult aspect of phase seven. No tank tests, no bomb, no nothing. The Deathmark Incantation that I've thrown on screen here is going to do 20,000 damage to Zamorak. And our Shatter is going to do 30,000 damage to Zamorak. And what that means is that in order to kill the boss, all we have to do is 50,000 damage. And with Necromancy, that is extremely easy because it's all about gaining and then spending stacks. Check it out. Here's how it's going to work. The rotation we're going to go through here is extremely easy, and you can actually do this in just about any order you would like. What we're going to do is we're going to kill the B-Rune, we're going to click on Zamrock, and then it's going to be Shatter, Finger of Death, Finger of Death, Volley of Souls. If you need extra damage, you can also use your Death Grasp special attack, but it should be long dead before that point. You're going to see right there that I just applied the Death Mark Incantation, which is extremely important. Don't forget to do that. It is very pertinent. And I'm also going to throw a Vulnerability Bomb because 10% extra damage is never a bad thing. It's also worth noting that with better gear, you can do this at any Enrage. I've done this at 1000% where the HP completely caps out. And it's also very consistent at 500, but more on that in future videos. I've killed the bee by turning onto it and clicking on it once. And just like that, you're going to see. I use Volley of Souls which does about 25,000 damage. I use Shatter, which does 30,000 damage. I'm praying Deflect Melee, which is extremely important because there is a Melee Slam coming in. I use Finger of Death once and twice, and Zamorak is completely and utterly dead. And that is a successful Phase 7 Zamorak kill. <laughs> Uh, I did a bunch of testing with this. It is extremely consistent. Like, it's actually kind of scarily consistent how good this method is. Uh, but it is also worth noting 
that as soon as this big bomb connects with me, it is going to one-shot me. It's going to do all of my HP. And that's where the Ring of Death comes in. It means if you're a little bit late to the rotation, if that bomb had connected with me, it would activate my Ring of Death instead of killing me. And then I actually have a couple more seconds to continue dealing damage. So that's why the Ring of Death is really nice here. It actually gives you more time than what I used up in this clip and it makes it 100% consistent so long as you do the right rotation. In the sample kill you just watched, the B rune was the last one we had to kill, but the B rune is the closest one to Zamorak. So what happens if you get one of the further back runes? I wanted to show you that in this sample kill right here, where my final rune that I have to kill is actually the stick. Now, there are two sticks. There's one north and one south, and my advice would be to kill the one south because the movement is a little bit easier, at least in my experience. Now, I just want to mention that it is possible to fail this, and the timing is quite a bit more tight if you do get one of the back runes. It works 100% consistently once you've got it down, but do expect that if you're first learning it and you make any little mistakes here, you are very likely to have a bomb connecting with your head. That being said, I wanted to show you the movement because it is really not super difficult, and the timing should work out just about the same as if it's the closest rune. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to click on the rune that you're trying to kill, and then as soon as you kill the rune, all you want to do is click in the direction of Zamorak, use the surge key, click on Zamorak, and then spam out your first ability. And in doing so, you'll be able to attack with plenty of time to complete the kill, no problem at all. The one annoying thing about the Rig of Death, though, is that it will actually activate after a Sign of Life, which you don't really want. So if you want to do this Phase 7 rotation without wasting your Sign of Life, what you'd want to do is you'd actually want to remove your cape or just like not have a Sign of Life. In this instance, my sign of life is actually on cooldown, and I did that on purpose, because you actually want the Ring of Death to activate instead. But yeah, anyway, that's a super easy, clean, successful way to do Phase 7 Zamorak. It's very consistent, even in full tank gear, even with no Tier 99 Prayer, none of that nonsense. And uh, yeah, strong recommendation that if you're struggling with Zamorak, this is the best and easiest way to get your first kills in the bag. With that said, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful and useful. Enjoy getting 6 million coins of Alkables every time you do this because, you know, that seems balanced. And I will see you guys very soon uh, for another video and look out for the 500% talk through coming soon.